Welcome to my firework tutorial where we're going to create a stunning display of fireworks and we're going to do it using only the pen. So let's create a project and let's call the project fireworks seems a good enough name so fireworks and it'll start when the green flag is pressed and first of all the firework we're going to create is a rocket and that's going to fly up the screen but how fast is it going to fly up? I'm going to set a few variables up. I can delete my variable because I never use that. I'm going to set up an X for the X position of the firework. I'm going to set up Y for the Y position of the firework. I'm going to set up X velocity for how fast it's traveling sideways and Y velocity for how, how quickly it's traveling upwards. So the first thing I'll do, I'll create a custom block called launch firework. So my code, when I press the green flag, it will launch a firework. That will set up these variables. So I'll set the variable x to zero, so it starts in the middle of the screen. I'll set y to minus 180, so it starts at the bottom. And then I'll set the velocities, I'll set x velocity to zero, which means it won't be traveling sideways at all. And the Y velocity is a bit of a guesswork. I'm going to set it to 10. So it's going to be traveling up at a speed of 10. Now, as I said, I'm going to do this with pen. So I need to go over here to the extensions block, click on that and add the pen extensions. So now I've got the pen extensions. I've, I've launched my firework. I need to draw my firework, well, update my firework. So let's add another custom block called update firework. And this time I'll run without screen refresh. So I don't know if there are going to be any loops in here. And if there are, it needs to be without screen refresh to do them quickly. So update firework. This needs to change the x coordinate by however fast we're traveling with x velocity. And it needs to similarly change the y coordinate from Y velocity, and then draw the firework. This, we're gonna set the color for the firework. We're gonna set it to 50, no idea what color 50 is, but I'm sure it's very fireworky. We're gonna set the pen size. Again, I'm just picking out numbers here, you can change them. Set the pen size to 10, and I need to go to XY, to where the firework is, which is the X and Y coordinates. So let's drag those over. So it's going to the correct position for the firework and then to draw the firework, I'm just gonna use a dot. I'm just gonna put the pen down and lift the pen up again. And I'm gonna do this in a loop. So it launches the firework and then forever update the firework. And the scratch cat, I'm going to go to where it says show and I'm going to hit the unshow button because he doesn't look like a firework. He has no place here. There he goes. So my code is launching the firework, which is setting up the variables and then repeatedly updating it, which should be moving and drawing it. So let's have a look. There it goes straight at the screen. Few things wrong. Firstly, it's leaving a line behind it. And that's because with the pen, you need to erase what's there before drawing again otherwise it will just draw on top of what's over there every time and so in our loop let's erase all the, the pen then it will just draw the dots going up like that which is great but it's just going up and up and up because we need gravity to slow that firework down and to do that i'm going to add a variable and i'm going to call it underscore gravity. Now I use underscore because it's a constant value. This, Once I set this, it isn't going to change. So it's for this sprite only. And as I always do, I'll have a block called initialize, which I'll run without screen refresh because I don't know if I'm going to need any loops in here. And in initialize, I'm going to set the value for gravity. So let's set gravity in now. What should gravity be? Well, in the real world, it's 9.82 meters per second per second. We don't need to use real values, but I'm going to 
approximate it. So it's close enough to 10 meters per second per second. We're not dealing in seconds. The screen updates 30 times a second. So I'm interested in a value of 10 divided by 30. So that's what I'll set it to. This is the sort of thing you can easily play around with. You can change the values and see what effects it have. If you made it a smaller value, it'd be like you're on Mars, and things would be more floaty. If you're a bigger value, it would have a really strong gravity and things would drop really quickly. So I set it to 10 divided by 30, except gravity works downwards, not upwards. So minus 10 divided by 30. And the way this is going to work is, first of all, I have to remember to initialize it at the beginning. And then y changes by y velocity, but y velocity changes by gravity. And this is actually a very useful thing to know because when you're making characters jump in a game, you can use this same formula to give them very, very realistic looking jumps. So let's press the green flag and see what happens. Up it goes and down it comes. Didn't make it very far, so let's try it with 14, a bigger velocity when it starts. And there it goes, much higher. And I think, because it's a firework and it's not going to be the same every time, I think we can give it a random velocity between 12 and 16. So each fire, well, actually, between 12.0 and 16.0. Now, the reason for that, and this is very important, if I make it a random value between 12 and 16, it will give me 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16. If I add the point 0, then I might get 12 and a half. I might get 16.1. I get a, a lot more variety between the numbers of 12 and 16. It won't always be a whole number. And for the x velocity, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to pick between minus 5.0 and 5.0. So now, hopefully, when I set the firework going, it's gone off slightly to the side, it's gone very high, I'll set another one going, not quite so high and more straight up. So you can see each firework is going to be slightly different, which is exactly what I wanted. And we can maybe set the colour to be random as well. So instead of setting it to 50, there are actually 200 different colours to choose from. So let's set it to a value between 1 and 200. Then every firework, and we'll test it quickly, Every firework is changing colour as it flies, which is great, but it's not exactly what I wanted. What I wanted was for the initial colour to be chosen randomly, but to keep that colour. So I'm going to set another variable called colour for this sprite only, and I'll set it when I launch the firework. So I'll drag the random setting from 1 to 200 over there to where I'm setting the colour variable, and over here I'll use the variable. So now when I fire up a firework, it's going up blue, it's going up red, purple, and this is, a, this is a good demonstration of why it's very useful and very important to run your code quite frequently, and then you'll see if things aren't happening as expected straight away, rather than changing lots and lots and lots of code, running it, and then not knowing which bit needs updating. So now we have the basic code for one rocket, but we're going to want more than one firework. So instead of using variables, we're going to use lists. So instead of just having these all stored in variables, we're going to make a list for x, for this sprite only, and make lists for all of those, one for y, one for x velocity, one for y velocity, and one for colour. And then each firework can have its own copy of those variables in the list. So let's just untick the checkboxes so they're hidden from the screen. And we need five adds. So let's make five. By duplicating, I've made five of those. I'm going to add to the X. I'm going to add to y, I'm going to add to x velocity, y velocity, and colour. I'm going to put those at the top there. And the values that go in were the values that went into the variables. So x 
0, y minus 180, x velocity, I'll drag that up, y velocity, I'll drag that up, and colour, I'll drag that up. And I'm going to keep that block of variable settings because they're going to come in handy because I'm no longer working straight on the variables, I need the values from the lists. So when I update the firework, what I can do is use those sets to read items so x can read item 1 from x, y can read item 1 from y. I know it's item 1 because I've only got one firework, so x velocity read item 1 from x velocity and similar for y velocity and lastly for colour. So now it's read all the list values into those variables so I can update the variables exactly as I did before but then at the end I need to write those values back into the lists. To do that I use replace. It's five of them so I'm going to need five replaces. And at the moment I'm going to leave it with item one of everything because I've only got one firework. So replace item one of x with x, item one of y with y, and the same with x velocity, y velocity, and then finally with colour. So this code is essentially doing the same thing, but it's now doing it using a list. But there's one important thing to remember here. When you're using lists, when you initialize your game at the beginning, make sure there's nothing in those lists to so delete everything from each list. Because when you finish running the game the first time, you might have 10 values left in each list and you don't want those left there when you run it again the second time. You want to be starting with empty lists. So we'll delete all of X, all of Y. And any lists that we add, we're going to make sure at the beginning it's being correctly emptied like that. And so now it should work just as it did before, but instead of just using a variable, it's using the list. So there it goes. And yet the code looks the same or when you run it, but it's more powerful now. I now have the ability to run more than one firework. So where I'm updating firework, I'm going to add, I'm going to edit that by right clicking, clicking edit. I'm going to add an input called index so I can tell it which firework to update and when I'm updating the firework there I will well, I'll just use the number one because I've only got one firework but here I'm going to put index in there so if later on I have more than one firework I could pass in index as being two or three or whatever value I need so I'll just replace all the ones with indexes, I'll just put them here so they can reach more easily. And scroll the screen. So again, it's going to do exactly the same thing, but it's now ready for when I've got more than one firework. So if I run the code now, it's a good idea to keep checking. It is working as expected as it did before. And that's a great place to leave part one of the firework tutorial. In part two, we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to make the fireworks explode into fragments. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to the Rock Coder YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.